My name is Becky Wright, I'm the director of the TUC's Organising Academy and what I just wanted to kind of go with you, so when I first was invited by Netroots to come and talk, the thing that popped into my mind was the, the things we do wrong as campaigners. <laughs> and that's partly because um, I think we learn an awful lot by the mistakes that we make and I often talk about all the things that I have done wrong as a campaigner as much as the things that I have done right because I kind of hope that other people will be able to take my failure and, and, and move it on. And intriguingly for me, I came to this role by virtue of feminist activism. Um, and when I first joined the trade union movement, uh, I kind of thought, oh, it's going to be completely different, this whole organising thing. But what I found was, actually, at the end of the day, it's about winning on campaigns, but not just winning on campaigns, but building long-lasting relationships and structures that enable more campaigns to take place. So the thing that I think is really interesting about the whole uh, Obama for America was they had all of this mass groundswell, loads of organisation on the ground, loads of contacts, and then as soon as you know, he got elected, that completely withered away. And I would say that was a massive failure. Because, like I'm going to go to Barack Obama. <laughs> well, um, but I, and I think that's actually something for us to kind of to think about, actually. You know, we tend to reinvent the wheel by virtue of not sustaining the wheels. <laughs> Um, and so this is what I wanted us to think on, is that, kind of going a little bit on to what, from what Tim was saying, is that I've often found that the problem we have, whether it's organising online or offline, is that quite frankly, we, it's all about the issues. It's all about what it is that we're campaigning on. If you get the issue right, then everything else follows. <coughs> and if you have the issue, it enables you to build the strategy that you need in order to get that change. It enables you to build the website that you need to get people involved. And this is one of the things that I think we fail on. Because we don't always pick the right issues. Or at least we don't understand the issues the way in which most people in a room would understand it. And that has massive implications in terms of our ability to communicate, our ability to get people to be active, whether it's through collectivism or kind of old fashioned demonstrations protests, occupations, meetings, etc, etc. And I think one of the massive challenges for us, and I think we, um, it's in uh, Tom Chatfield's book, you know, Slaptivism or Activism, is this, this whole problem we have about the depth of feeling that people have around issues. And us not really understanding that. So there's a really, I talk about it quite a lot, I'm going to actually come behind this, because it's really difficult to come with a which is this guy, there's a professor of industrial relations called John Kelly, uh, we did quite a bit of work with John, and um, he has this theory of mobilisation, um, and it's quite a complicated theory, theory to some extent, but what it basically hinges on is that people will get off their bums and do things if they feel that there has been a breach of their contract or a breach of the social consensus. And I use two examples to demonstrate that. The first one is Millie Dowler and use of the world. Up until that point, we were more than happy, well, not more than happy, but we thought celebrities are fair game if their phones are being hacked. Well, sorry Sienna Miller, but you put it on yourself because you kind of caught the press and you caught the paparazzi and all that kind of stuff. Whatever. 
The minute it turned to being a dead girl and her parents, we all turned round and went, whoa, stop. Because our sense of the social, our social values had been violated. And from that, you got people active, you got people talking. But did we harness that power? Did we harness those people to further activism? The other thing, the other example, is the pensions disputes that's going on at the moment. Um, I know there are some trade unionists in the room. Um, and what I'm going to say is, you know, like people signed up to their contract of employment. In it, they said, you will have a final salary. And everyone was happy with that. The minute the government started playing around, you saw not just, I suppose what people would say, the typical unions going out on strike, but a whole raft of other workers, employees, saying this isn't right. I mean, you've got the BMA contemplating industrial action. Uh, my partner is in fact a medic and he with proud hand went in with his ballot and said they're not going to screw me over, I'm going to, you know. And, you know, and this is really kind of proof that, you know, in order to create long-lasting, sustainable structures, we need to really pick the right issues that will motivate people, that will mobilise people and will get them doing something. And the challenge for us is not just picking the issues, but recognising that some issues are very surface deep. And that's why you might have some online mobilisation. Because you don't really have to do much in order to express your anger. And so what you might have to think about as an online campaigner is, how do I really get someone thinking, not just surface, oh, I feel really angry. I'm going to tweet that. <laughs> Social order, change. <laughs> how do we get them to go, I really, really hate that. That makes me really angry. Not only am I going to tweet that, but I'm going to talk about it with my friends. I'm going to talk about it with my family. I'm going to go for meetings. I'm going to do petitions. I have to say I'm really wor uh, worried about the use of e-petitions. It seems that there's an e-petition for everything. And at what point does that actually lose its impact? Because an MP is going, not another e-petition. I'm just going to put that away. And so, firstly, for those of you who have ever been in a trade union context, probably know, is that we look at four things for issues, about them being widely felt, deeply felt, winnable, visible, you can go on, there are a whole load of, of other aspects to it, but just thinking about picking issues that appeal to the whole room, that are deeply felt enough for people to have that, fear, that kind of mobilisation, that are winnable, and, and by that I kind of mean that you know what you want to get out of it, and it's not some kind of loose, kind of huggy, kind of, yeah, we'll be all right when we're in, I think, some kind of place. Because I think for hardened activists, that's fine. But for a lot of people, they want to know how things are going to be won and what is the promised land. Anyone who knows me, I talk an awful lot about my mum, because she's ever such a massive influence on me, but she is completely separate and she from the trade union movement, and she kind of is the person who goes, oh, shut up, that's just you talking hyperbole again, except she doesn't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, she's a perfect example of that. She doesn't want to kind of go on demos and marches where we're kind of talking about some kind of amorphous thing. She just wants to go, I want the kids at my college to get EMA. That's it. And the last one is visible. So it's got to kind of end with a tangible outcome that people can feel and people can see and experience. So let's say I switched all the lights off in this room. Is it, you, know, you might all say the whole entire room, oh, we want the lights on. And I feel really strongly about that. And it's winnable because you can talk to me about it. 
Or you can not, as kind of going into what Tim's area, you can completely bypass me and run up and turn the lights on yourself. And you can feel it because the lights come on. You can see it because the lights come on. And then there was light. So how many kind of online activism and campaigns actually kind of think about the issues that they're doing, think about it in these kinds of terms? Things that actually have longer lasting implications. And the other thing is about planning, which kind of Casper's going to go into a lot more detail about it. I'm always really, I think it stems from the fact that I quite like plans. I think it helps me to work out what I'm doing on any given day. But actually having a plan about what you're going to do is really important. Um, it helps you to really think about what it is you want to achieve and how you're going to go about achieving it. And I was talking to a friend of mine who does a lot of environmental campaigns and I said to her, well, what do you want to achieve? It took her five goes to tell me what it was she wanted out of her campaign. And I said to her, I don't, don't mean to be funny, if it's taking you five goes to tell me what you want, imagine trying to tell that to my mum. If you don't know what it is you want to really achieve and how you're going to go about doing it, you're kind of on a point into nothing. So you have to think about who your target is, who it is that has the power that you want to get, who's the decision maker. And then, then from all of those things, do your actions kind of come out? So then how you use, you know, online, how you use your emails. You know, I'm still really quite um, intrigued by the fact that a lot of, I suppose from a union point of view, union websites don't have kind of a bit of an anger, hope, action. You know, that people go, that, go to the website, they feel, re they kind of get riled up about a campaign, the union gives them hope for it, and then there's a bit of action. Or that that isn't translated into the emails that we write. That we don't kind of think, you know, what's the implication of all the actions that we do? Because we don't want to reinvent the wheel, we want to sustain it. So how do we, at each point, get people involved? And I think I finished our time. So I'm going to lead on to Casper then to talk in a bit more detail because when we were chatting we realised actually there was a massive overlap between five and seven weeks. Yeah, I might change tack a little bit following on from where you are. Um, yeah. Oh,